Damn it, I can't do anything right. All of that talking and it didn't do any good. Well, I'm not going to repeat anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything memorable. I'm telling you, I need to fire my producer. Anyhow. Welcome, welcome. So I was saying is we got some some of these fences to do and then this will be this will be complete and we can go back to doing the vehicles that we that we stopped. I guess you didn't hear I still have the I still have the uh, chimneys to do which I'm not going to bother with until I realize that I actually like these buildings. Because it seemed kind of fiddly to put them on there. Yeah, I, I need to fire my producer. They're not worth a damn. My producer has issues. Um, they, um, they identify as a jackass. So... You know, if I mute the microphone, then I forget this is what happens. Um, if I don't mute the microphone, something will happen like, you know, it'll be like a screaming match or something like that. Or I'll rip a wet fart or something like that. And the people, something that people wouldn't have to hear. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, it's always something. Yeah, does this count as ASMR? The only thing like that that I've experienced, not really, is um, there's been times where I have... Um, I have been really tired, like I haven't gotten any sleep. And then I'm over caffeine, and you just get to the point where you're just kind of like in this, you know, you can look at things and it's calming, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's not like it's drug induced. I've never done drugs. Other than caffeine and alcohol, that's it. Ibuprofen. I generally I generally enjoy a quietness. Helps me think. Mr. Wadi. These things this glue works pretty well. I mean, you know, you can't, you got to plan ahead and like, you know, plan on using it the next day kind of thing because it, it needs 24 hours to, to work really well. But I mean, I guess I could pull it apart if I want to, but that's, you know, we'll see how this looks all together. You presume, I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Um, I don't. I would love to walk. I would love to mount them like there are in that picture that I'm using as the sum, as a thumbnail for this. It's actually the picture from uh, Paper Terrain, and it's the picture of this northern Russian Hamlet set. But I would hate to do that and then realize, oh man, I wish I hadn't mounted them. So I'm kind of I'm on the fence about it. I don't know. I don't know quite yet what I'm going to do. I'm leaning towards not mounting them because um, 
I want to see what they look like on the table, not mounted. If I don't like how they look, if these look too corny or too fake looking, then I'm not going to use them. You know, but... I would like for them to work. There are a lot of nice building options out there now that there weren't available when I had gotten these 17 years ago or so. There's a lot of options on Etsy. There's several sellers. But just like everything else, miniature-wise, many of the Etsy sellers I'm interested in are in the UK, the land of toys. And there's a problem. We're not going to throw all these away. I just want to use a sharp one. These, those are plenty good for taking things off miniatures. We just need a sharp blade for this. But there's some kind of a hack or whatever. The Royal Mail got hacked and they can't ship anything. No overseas stuff, so hopefully these will work out because it's annoying. It seems like every single thing I want comes from the UK, gaming-wise. And especially more in 20 millimeter because that's kind of a common scale or used to be a common scale over there. It, it, I, I, I don't want to say it didn't catch on in the US because it did. Um, but a lot of the 20 millimeter stuff I want comes from the UK. Uh, pray for me. I'm stuck in analysis paralysis looking at museum and QRF trying to decide which army to get using what and which elephants I might go for. Ooh, I like that problem. So what armies are you considering? Or is everything on the table? They both have sales in, in uh, January. Is that what both of those do in January sales? QRF and... Uh, Museum. The only thing I don't like about museum is, well, the newer ranges probably aren't that way, but they just had one pose for a lot of the figures. So I don't know if I'd do a whole army of just museum guys. Um, and that might not be the case with, with some of the newer things, but I, I certainly wouldn't mind mixing them in. But Oliver Cromwell, back for more. See, you didn't get hung, drawn, and quartered last night. I didn't learn anything about Oliver Cromwell in school. Nothing. But. You know, the fun history you don't learn in, you don't learn in school. You got to read it on your own. And by school, I meant I meant even college. Not a single ECW reference in school, not one. Yeah, it just gets forgotten. Yep. But there's lots of things that get skipped over. You know, you don't learn about any, any of the, any Asian stuff at all in school. You know, and I'm not saying I want it to all be about Asian stuff. It's just, it's nice to have some variety. Okay, this... Should line up like so. Uh, 
and likewise across here. across there. Well, now I can say TGIF because, you know, it's over. It's over for now. Okay, we're gonna glue that later. We'll do all the gluey stuff together. Let's go ahead and clear that area. All right, um, just, just this set right here. Okay, ready for that ASMR, that ASMR shit? Here we go. This song almost reminds me of Stuff that makes my almost nails on a chalkboard kind of thing, but cleaning your ears out with uh, Q tips, something like that. What's everyone's opinion on renaming of Sir Francis Drake's primary school due to his involvement in the slave trade? Some people seem to be very pissed. Well, when I think of Sir Francis Drake, I think of the guy that stole shit from my people. But then we stole our shit from somebody else, so, you know. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with keeping people's names. I mean, if you're going to rename stuff after people that are, you know, have no sin, you're not going to have many, many names of different things, you know? If he was involved in the slave trade when everybody else was involved in the slave trade, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Now, if he was like the only sla guy running slaves, you know, in the 1950s or something like that, that's a little different, but... That's just my personal opinion. I don't have I don't have thin skin about stuff like that, but there's like four armies in tossing in between. Okay. Carthage, Republican Roman, Aetolians or a successor. I'm planning on using museum to add some more variety to the two QRF packs. Thank goodness I farted. I knew you were up to no good during that muted portion. No, I don't have any gas today. Sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. They showed us the movie in school. Mr. Marcus, welcome. Carthage, Republican, Roman, Italians are a successor. I don't know. Between... All those armies that you told me, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't go to QRF or or museum for any of those. Um, there's just stuff that's made by um, well, man. You live in the UK. I'd be buying every single thing that I could from from. Um, Forged in battle, I get my hands on. Their stuff, I think, looks amazing. But um, if they're running a sale, you know the QRF. I think museum has many packs that aren't very consumer friendly, especially if they all have the same pose because they come what like eight figures too. So do you really want eight guys that are the same pose? I think QRF's a little friendlier. In terms of that and they have some of their packs up some variety but you know I fully mix everything you know I don't have a problem with stuff like that um, but then you know if I'm doing Romans I want them all to be in the same I want the Legionnaires to be all in the same pose they don't have to be but I think they look right they look right to me as you guys say across the pond 
they look right to my eye. So, what's the sale, like 25% off or something like that? Let's see, what did I miss? Um, war game with Sulla. Gaius Marius would be quite interesting, actually. I heavily prefer Sulla. I do. I don't, there's something about Marius. I don't, I don't like him. I don't like him. And, you know, in reality, they were both assholes. Okay, but I don't know. I find Solo a lot more um, appealing. It would be interesting if you play something that's not like DBA where both army lists are exactly the same. Then it's just kind of freaking boring. One thing DBA doesn't give you is it does not give you any army list for the social war. So you got the Romans, but you don't know who the, you know, you don't know what the other side looks like. I mean, certainly it can't be like Italian city-states. They wouldn't even, it wouldn't even be a contest. You know, legionnaires going up against light infantry kind of thing. That wouldn't work. Uh, I've been watching your village build. Interesting product. Looking forward to seeing your pictures on our war game table. Museum is 25% off. QRF is 15. QRF missed out on me buying their Scots. Oh, well. Funny thing is I bought some stuff at Historicon just before... Just earlier, this stuff that I don't know when the hell I'm going to get to. But man, it's hard to pass up what I'm doing now because what I'm doing now is like, I feel like doing buildings, so I do buildings. Uh, I want to do a tank. I do a tank. You know, not like, well, I got to paint another 30 figures of this because I got to have them done for a show. That just doesn't appeal to me, you know? That just doesn't appeal to me to, to have to have to, you know, paint 12 or 13 or 14 stands of the next thing before I do something else. I'm just I'm not doing that anymore. Did it for too many years. My experience with museum is they're too large. Well, the new museums are a little different. Um, museums are all over the place. Some of them are huge, and some of them are tiny. Uh, I've got some medieval crossbowmen, which are definitely on the small side of things. And then I've got some Chinese peasants that are massive. They're almost like 20 millimeter size. And it's the same sculptor. I think, I think Dave is the guy that sculpts them all. So maybe he just had a change of heart and he just wanted to make the guys more robust so they'll, you know, be more durable. But they're all over the place. And I don't necessarily have a problem with it as long as, you know, going in what you're getting yourself into. I got an Irishman from, from, um, from, um, museum miniatures and he's an old casting and he's huge and he's on the same stand with some Essex guys and he works fine because you know people are of bigger sizes uh, you know of different sizes and it's a lot easier to do with like ancients and medievals than it is with like World War II stuff you know World War II stuff an, a rifle is a rifle size it's not like well we're gonna give you a big rifle because you're a big guy kind of thing you know the weapons have to stay consistent you know Honestly, on a rare occasion, I look at ancient Rome, I find the late Republican history the most interesting. You wish bicorn was 15 millimeter. There was a line, I think it was by Minifigs, right? Minifigs had their bicorn line, and their packages even said bicorn. They're 15s. You're thinking of something else, though, I'm sure.
somebody had made some comment about the Romans. I think it was on a history. I don't think it was on a wargaming thing. Oh, I know what it was. I think it was somebody had made a reference to they're coming out with another um, what's that movie The Passion of the Christ like a sequel or something like that which I haven't even seen the first one I mean you know what happens so and they made a comment like you know the Romans were like the most brutal people in the world I think everybody of that time period was that brutal you know I don't think the Romans were any worse than anybody else As a matter of fact, I think they were less brutal than, than many other people. But Did anyone else watch HBO Rome? I would hope everybody's seen it. I thought it was excellent. I saw it in 2007 when I was painting my Romans. I thought it was excellent. The only thing I didn't like about it is... Some of the casting decisions. I'm not a fan of Kieran Hines. I don't think, I don't think that he was cast well. As um, as Julius Caesar, I think he should have been a lot more likable. Uh, I didn't find him likable at all. So, but I think they did a really good job with what's known and creating, you know, other make believe stuff in there to fill in the gaps. I think they did a really good job with that. Sex scenes are a bit unnecessary. Well, I don't remember. Everything has sex scenes in them now. Were they really over the top? Mark Anthony, that guy, the guy that played him, I really like him. He had all the best lines. And he was an asshole, but he still had all the best lines. I couldn't stand the kid that played Octavian. So just because of that, I'm not an Octavian fan. And you know, they, two different people played him. You know, the, this, this, the first season is much better than the second season. Um, but the kid that plays him in the first season is just like a prick. A spoiled little prick. I was, I was hoping something would happen to him. I thought it was really good. So. I tried watching, what's that thing on Netflix? Is it called Barbarians or whatever? I tried watching it, man, and I just couldn't get through it. I just couldn't get into it. I watched like three episodes and couldn't watch it anymore. But then I'm a lot more tolerant of ancient stuff that might not be 100% accurate than like World War II stuff. You know, World War II stuff, it's like, come on, you guys ought to know better. You can't do that kind of stuff. But, like, you know, I liked Gladiator. I liked uh, Centurion, the movie Centurion. I liked it a lot. 
Now, a lot of Centurion might have to do with, I liked a lot of the cast that was in there. You know, so that always helps. Watching something and, you know, there's actors in it that you care for. Or, you know, you, you like their acting style or what have you. How about Brutus? Was he well cast in your opinion? I don't know a whole lot about him, but whoever plays Brutus, that's, I can't get him that. That's what he does because that's the first thing I saw him in. So even though he was one of the, um, he was in Game of Thrones, right? The guy that played him, was he one of the Boltons or something like that? It, he's just still Brutus to me. So he's like perpetually cast as Brutus, that guy, whatever his name is, you know. Enjoyed Rome. Shame it got cut short. I wish Milius could get another job. He's been effectively blacklisted for over a decade now. Who the hell is Milius? And why is he blacklisted? I guess it's a director, an actor? John Milius, he wrote Rome and did the Conan film. Why was he blacklisted? He probably said something anti-woke or something. I liked it a lot. You know, it had... It had stuff in there that can appeal to people that aren't into, you know, history stuff like we are, you know. Had girly stuff in there, you know. Even though I can't get my wife to watch something like that. She wouldn't be able to handle the violence. And wrote Apocalypse Now. I guess I need to see Apocalypse Now. I wasn't real very impressed with Apocalypse Now. I've seen it, but I think I've only seen it one time. You know, the problem with Yeah, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have cast what's his name to play um, Julius Caesar. It just he didn't quite look like him and he certainly didn't I didn't feel like he personally had any charisma. And Julius Caesar had a lot of charisma. You know? Uh, the Terror was also an amazing series as well. The supernatural creatures didn't bother me too much. The Terror. Hmm, I haven't heard of The Terror. Um, anybody seen Versailles? The series Versailles. Mitch and I really liked it. And uh, other than some people should have put some effort to make some French, French accents. Um, I thought it was really good. And it's not really something that has a lot of action. But... You know, it's a historical thing that you watch it and you know there's going to be inaccuracies in it. But does it get you to go and pull up Wikipedia and look at, you know, events that happen that you happen to see on film? It did for me. So that's a historical win as far as I'm concerned. You know, if you're watching something that makes you go, oh, let me, let me read a little bit more about this stuff that really happened. Or that seems kind of odd. Let's re read about what supposedly really happened and, and, and see how it got changed from what was in the screenplay.
allegedly Hollywood was upset. He got said he was so far right, he was past Genghis Khan and turned into a righty Maoist, whatever that means. I think Genghis Khan is right wing. I don't know. I think Genghis Khan is doesn't really apply to wings. I think he used both wings of his cavalry, not just the right one. <laughs> you know, if people just kept their political opinions to themselves, then people wouldn't know how they felt about stuff, and then you wouldn't, you know, just just do what they're, we're paying you to do, which is to write screenplays or whatever. You don't have to try to, you know, change the world and shit like that. Oh, we still got these things to do. I'm going to do all the gluing together, so... If we make a mess, we can cover up with this stuff. Not have this sticky stuff that we're trying to cut across. I'll be done with this in no time. What, about 30 more minutes and we'll be done with this? I'm going to go back to see what some of this stuff looks like. Writer of Dirty Harry. I've never seen any of the Dirty Harry movies. They're just before my time, you know. I'm not opposed to, I just... And hadn't, you know, hadn't seen him. Well, I knocked out another, um, what's it called? Resident Evil movie at lunchtime. Did I? Or I knocked out half of it. I don't know. I'm getting confused. They're not very good, but I'm committed to watching them at this point, so. Maybe I'll like the series later, since one of you guys said it has nothing to do with the, the movies. Eastwood, Man With No Name series are amazing. Yeah, I've seen his movies. I haven't seen them all, not by a long shot, but I just hadn't seen the Dirty Harry ones. I'm not opposed to watching old movies, but you got to make time to watch movies. and I've limited time where I'm willing to do that. You know, at least my daughter is now the age where she can watch action stuff with me. And we're trying to watch that Rogue Heroes or whatever, and I'm just not impressed with it. You know, I just... She enjoyed it more than I did. And I'm willing to give it another episode, but... You know... But I'll be honest with you, I have not seen a lot of Westerns. It is not a venue that appeals to me. And again, we're influenced by our dads. My dad didn't, wasn't interested in Westerns. My dad didn't do sports. I don't do sports. You know, My dad does, did history. That's why I do history and maps and that kind of stuff. So, you know, we're affected by our fathers. If you happen to know who they are. And my dad wasn't into westerns.
I've seen probably 10 Westerns in my life. I'm probably up to 10. I don't know what they are. Let's take that little, which, which side is that attaching stuck from? This one? Yeah. <laughs> Hanging chads on these things. Sometimes I get a wild hair up my ass and I'll look things up. And I need to look this one up. I just thought about it right now. It's not something I think about all the time. What was what would have been the worst president that never got elected? So in other words, somebody who didn't make it to president. And of all those people, who would have been the worst one? And of course, you know, opinions are all over the place. I'm just kind of interested in seeing what people that are interested in that would have would have thought who's the worst guy that didn't get elected you know it wasn't like a fourth party like somebody you know who came in second but didn't win you know <laughs> but the problem with politics is there's people are just extremely most people I think most people are kind of sensible, but most people that make a lot of noise are not sensible and they literally will follow somebody off a cliff. And, you know, I definitely lean one way towards the other, but, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't follow somebody who I knew was corrupt, you know, or who was totally lying to me, you know, telling me what I want to hear and then doing something else. So I'm pretty... I'm pretty apathetic to it, but that'd be an interesting thing. I need to, I need to look that up. Might be some interest. There's like one guy that does this list of things, and he's he's kind of on the opposite end of things that I am, but he seems pretty reasonable, you know. And he goes through like this, does this chart of you know, grading presidents, you know, past presidents. And, and I think they didn't even go into W. I think they did all the ones before. Because, you know, the, the closer you are to the things how are now, the, the more muddier the water gets. And, you know, things don't come out in, in full form yet or everything. But they basically rated all the... And it was really interesting is kind of seeing, you know, what their reasoning is between it. I've just kind of had... I think I was working out at the gym or something like that. And I just kind of had it in the background, you know, because there's some people I just don't know anything about, you know. Um, I mean, I used to know them all in order, but, you know, there's just some periods of history that just aren't as interesting to me as anything else. And I'm not particularly interested in American history at all to begin with of any period. So, but it's kind of interesting. And, and this this particular person... Um, also, I did like um, Roman generals and stuff like that. They've done several videos on them. And they're interesting to kind of see what their opinion is of it, you know. And as long as, you know, you, you cross-reference yourself and you're being honest. But if you're, you know, you're going in with, oh, I, I, want the, I want the data to show this. So let me, 
manipulate it. That's I don't want to I don't want to listen to any kind of programming that's like that. You know, I'm not really learning anything. T thirty four movie was so bad, but the special effects were excellent. But yes, it was bad. It it was really really bad. But the special effects that we need more of that of the special effects. But all those Russian movies are like that. They're like, you know, they're anti-apologetic. It's like everything was just hunky-dory until the Nazis came and, you know. You know what movie I just, one movie I thought I was going to love and lots of people liked it and I really disliked it? was Death of Stalin. I really disliked Death of Stalin because those guys made no effort to make even a moderate Russian accent. And it is a big deal. It is a big deal when you've got the guy that plays Stalin sounds like all cockney and shit. When you've got, you know, Jason Isaacs, who I think is a very talented actor, and I happen to like him, you know, pulls out an AK and goes, oi. I mean, come on, man. Act a little. Get out of there. I can do it. <laughs> I did not like that movie. And that was a movie that everybody said, oh, you're going to love it. Just don't even give me a, you know, don't give, even give me a, 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 an idea. Just go in blind. And once you go in there, like, oh, this is going to be a this is going to be this, that, or the other. It doesn't live up to your expectations. Well, I'll admit, I'm hard to please when it comes to movies because, you know, I'm not a fool. William Jennings Bryant and his idea to hand out silver coins to cause inflation has to be up there for the worst runner-up. The bridge scene, yeah, skipping the round. Well, that was just as bad as the midway scene where that round, where, where that bomb skipped off the deck. Yeah. Yeah, the elite German tank commander that could, that you know, they didn't make a razor in his size. Yeah, that scene was, I'll admit the scene at the beginning though, where that T-34 was hiding in that Russian town. That was pretty cool. That, that whole sequence was pretty cool. William Jennings Bryant. All right. Here's my homework assignment. Let's go, we're going to read about this. Causing inflation. You're a moron to cause inflation. <laughs> inflation just bad. Chaos, you chaos causer. All right, um, I don't need the bottom half, of the top half of this, so we're going to use this as a notepad. What's his name? William Jennings Bryan. Okay. William Jennings Bryant. So he was a runner-up, huh? I have no idea who the hell he ran against. I've never heard of him. A lot of the guys, I bet if you look at runner-ups in elections, you've never even heard of people. Some people you never even heard of. You know, especially if they like ran once and then like disappeared. Whatever happened at Greyhound with Tom Hanks that ever come out, it did. And, you know, it, it was, first of all, if you're going to make a movie about a, dis, a destroyer, a destroyer in the North Atlantic during the Battle of the Atlantic, it needs to be a Commonwealth destroyer. You see what I did there? I didn't put British. Because I know I, I automatically use British. I don't want to discount the Commonwealth. You know, everybody's in it together. Um, it should be a you know a Commonwealth destroyer. End of story. It should be an H class destroyer, not some Fletcher class. And you know, all right. So I got over that. But you know, there's a scene. There's a scene in there where the where the U boat, one of the U the U boat uh, Wolf Pack commander ends up tying into the phone thing and they can talk to him and it's just just dumb as shit like you know what do you take me for it's just stuff like that where they just 
instead of it being an educational opportunity for people that maybe don't know anything about it, you like, give them this, you know, really, we just lost the tip? Ugh. You, know, you send the audience in the wrong direction type of thing. Or what was that stupid movie, U-571, where the Americans capture the Enigma machine? Come on, man. I don't know why Hollywood has this idea that we have to put Americans in there so that Americans can relate. No, you don't. Nobody's going to watch a movie and be pro -Ger no, uh, and be pro German. <laughs> Remember Das Boot? It's mediocre, but it's a classic. Uh, I didn't think it was great either. Um, there's a there's many scenes that are really good, like when they're remember when they're trying to meet the other U boats and there's those heavy seas. That, that's some cool shit in there, you know. They you know. There's no T at the end of Brian. Okay, all right. That might make it more difficult. We got to find out who the hell this guy is. <laughs> Greyhounds a Greyhounds a you watch it once kind of thing and I don't ever want to see it again you know But it's better than Midway. God, I hated Midway. And I'm not talking about the old Midway, which I haven't seen the old Midway in a long time. But I saw Tora 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 relatively recently, and I thought it was wonderful. Especially considering when it is, when it came out. 1970, it's older than I am. Company of Heroes. I don't know. It sounds like one of those movies that's... You, you go on, I'm like, where did they, this thing come out? And all these other ones. Is that... That's not one of those... Um, not one of the Mormon movies, is it? You know which one I'm talking about. The Not when trumpets fade. The, the uh, Saints and Soldiers. That's not one of the Saints and Soldiers one, is it? I did see all those the other day. And I thought the first one was actually okay. And then as they went on, it, they got worse and worse. Still haven't watched that Black Mirror episode yet, but the girlfriend and I have it planned. Oh, please see it. I'm going to stop building it up because then it'll be like, oh, it wasn't all that. I know. I should just be quiet about it. Yeah. Well, I got through another another um, Resident Evil, so I'm one, one closer to, to the end. They're pretty much, they're pretty much worthless. And I don't even know which one I'm on right now because they all sound the same. Afterlife, Extinction, Retrib... I think I'm on Retribution. Yeah, they're garbage. The first one I think is actually okay. But... One of them. One of them, I think the second or the third one. This one scene where she shows up with all the clones and they all got MP5Ks or whatever those things are. You know, machine pistols that are really short. 30 round magazine, five or 600 rounds per minute. And they're all opening up. None of them are recoiling. They, they got one in each hand, every one of them. They're opening up on whatever it is. They got one in each hand. You know, in about four seconds, each one of them is going to be out of ammo. And they, and they, and they just fire on and on and on and on. And never even make an attempt to reload load once. I'm like, who writes the script for this moron, moron thing? It's like, who would fund this? Oh, well. scene. You like the first one? Yeah, I think the first one's okay. 
You know, the first one did something that Walking Dead never did, and that was zombie dogs. You know? I thought the first one was all right. I liked how it used the um, the map a lot. You know the 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 CAD map, like where they were in different parts of the base. I liked how they they integrated that. Zombie dogs are a big part of the games. Okay. Well, I don't know if I'm going to dare I could do the VR game because I got the Walking Dead VR game and it's actually really good. But it, the difficulty on it ramps up. You have a portion of it that's kind of time based and I don't like being rushed. You know, I, I, I get paid to be, to be rushed and I don't like it. So I like being methodical. Especially when my life's at stake. And, um, you know, things appear in places that there's no opening to and stuff like that. But, um, I actually played it quite a bit. But every weapon you use in that game, and I forget, what's it called? Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. It's for the Oculus. Um, every weapon you use gets degraded. So, you know, if you build a bat, if you you know you find things you pick up things and you put them in your thing and it's very interactive you build a bat you could probably bash eight or nine zombies in and then the bat's no good so you have to keep finding stuff because you're you and you can't repair the things you have it's like you have this bat and it will fall apart and you can see the durability on it you got to go and build a new bat so um you have to keep finding stuff. But at some point, the game, just like, I went around one corner. And I got like seven zombies to deal with. And you could deal with like maybe two of them at once. Um, you know, two of them, if they come at you at once, you know, you could fend them off or whatever. But, you know, you've got to have room behind you, you know, to back up and stuff. And um, it just ramped up too diff It just got too difficult. And I was just playing at the normal level. I'm not one of those people like, I'm going to play it on hardcore. Yeah, you play it on hardcore if after you've already solved it. So I think I need to start over and just play it in story mode. And, is, you know, the story is kind of interesting. Um, but it looks, it looks a lot better when you're in the game than if you watch any video on YouTube. You're like, ah, that looks kind of dated. Nah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I mean, the pistol you pick up and it's got the serial number on anything. You can look at it like this. It looks just like a pistol. You can hold it with two hands, you know. got a half-life game which i'm a fan i'm a was a really big fan of the first half-life really big fan um i remember getting it on a sunday evening and i played it all through the night i went right into work afterwards i just couldn't stop playing it. i just thought it was excellent this is like 1999 2000 something like that i thought it was excellent they got a Half-Life game that you can use the the thing. But I have saw some of the videos and the plots just kind of 
you know, when it gets too, like, when the plot just doesn't interest you, it's kind of hard to be fully committed to a game. Like, for instance, lots of people like those Fallout games. And I tried playing Fallout 76 or whatever the hell it was, and I just, I got bored. It was kind of my experience with the first Elder Scrolls. It was like everything looked the same over and over again. It just kind of had the same look. I'm like, I didn't want to be in this world that just was, was drab in a way. Um, I know this. People love that series. It just doesn't. It just doesn't appeal to me. You know, that's why they make different games to different folks. I thought the redo they did on Doom. I was a big fan of Doom when it came out. The redo they did on Doom. Well, I guess it's, it's probably been eight years, six or seven years now. I thought it was really good. I mean, I, they did what Doom Three or whatever, which like sucked, um, and like the early two thousands. In 2005, 2006, something like that. But they came out without another one maybe five or six years ago that was kind of the same plot of the old game and, um, you know, redone. And, yeah, I, I thought that was I thought that was pretty cool. I mean, I ran it. I didn't go out and buy it. You know, I've, I've already saved the earth from Nazis and demons too many times. Like, like I'm kind of done with that, you know. Like, you guys keep bringing them back. I'm, you know, I can only save you guys from, from those, from those type of folks so many times. <laughs> you met one of the level designers on Doom. Of Doom, yeah. The original one, even with the MIDI soundtrack, I mean, it had some great music. Mm hmm Good times. Sandy Patterson was his name. He did the Call of Cthulhu stuff and was part of the Age of Empires team. Oh, huh, cool. I played a little bit of Age of Empires. I played the medieval one more, the the one that had like the Spartans and the Romans and stuff like that. It had been out a while by the time I got it. designers of doom the floor is lava literally on some of those levels it was i hate jumping games games where you have to jump or do some kind of difficult jump or you know you had to like in that one you had to line up on a corner and we play with a mouse i remember i'd play with a mouse i had like a drafting table in front of me and the computer was there so i'd you know you'd do this with a mouse to move forward or go this way and uh, good times. Look up Company of Heroes and Scene and Watch. Oh, I can't do that right now, but I will look it up. Company of Heroes and Scene, okay. Next assignment, Company of Heroes, end scene. It was hilarious, probably like hilariously bad. Is it poorly acted or poorly written? Maybe both. There's a lot of really poorly written stuff. The acting generally isn't horrible in things. But occasionally, 
you run in the trifecta where it's all of the above. Both. <laughs> Yeah, I don't care much for the Russian movies. They make me feel want to feel sympathetic towards them, and I'm just, I'm just not. It's hard to be sympathetic to Nazis and communists. Feet are freezing. That's never happens. What is it? Temperature outside? Oh, it's hidden now. It was like in the 40s or something. We got some rain and it's going to be a chilly day tomorrow, which I'm looking forward to. I'll take all the chilly days I can get a hold of. Free air conditioning. Free air conditioning and no heater. We don't run a heater here. That's crazy talk. Yeah, I'm trying to find a way to watch that movie that one of you guys recommended. Oh, I think it was Kevin. Kevin recommended it. The, quarter, the Quartermass movie. But man, I, I, I can't watch it. I can't, I can't even get it on any illegal watching things. I guess I could buy it. I just, it's going to be one of them watch it once kind of things, but the plot looks interesting. Yeah, it's dated, but I watch old stuff. The plot looks like one of those that would affect you as a kid. You'd be like, oh, is that really how it, is that really what's going on? No. Now go back to sleep. <laughs> Excellent. See that recent medieval one with the trial and duel at the end. No. No, I haven't. But, um... You're talking about the medieval one that came out recently with the well-known people in them? I don't know what it's called. It might even be called medieval. It's annoying to watch something that has a a really lame title. It's like, really, you threw millions of dollars into this and you can't come up with a decent title. But I have not seen it. But I remember trying to watch that one. What was that movie with Heath Ledger where he's a knight or something like that? And then they have freaking modern music in with it. And I'm like, I'm out. I can't watch that shit, you know? 
the quartermaster experiment. No, the um, quarter uh, quarter mass in the pit. You can't find that one anywhere. You could buy it. I just haven't felt the need to buy it. It'll turn up eventually. I don't want to watch any other ones. It might ruin the my experience with it. A Knight's Tale. Yeah, I hated it. It had like Queen in it. And I, I like Queen, but not in a medieval setting. Come on. <laughs> the Last Duel. Who the, who's in that? Is that the one that has like... Um, Matt Damon in it or something like that. It's got a couple of people. Oh, yeah, it's, doesn't it have, um, you know, whatever um, pouting, um, the pouting Sith in it, whatever his name is, Adam Driver. Everybody playing French people and nobody speaks with a French accent. Just fake it, man. It's not difficult to do. That's why I like I like movies that have people you never heard of, you know. Your brother loved that Knight's Tale movie, even with the new mu even with the modern music. I can't, I can't do that shit. That's sacrilegious. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, and I can't do like ironic, you know, treat you like you're seven years old Hollywood bullshit. Like for instance, what was the movie with the, with the Bloom guy? Kingdom of Heaven, right? The thing that I dislike the most about Kingdom of Heaven Other than they picked the wrong crusade. If they had made the first crusade. But see, I want a movie that will motivate me to read more about history or learn something. People make movies because they want to push an agenda or they want to tell a, uh, you know. I don't give a shit about that, you know. Um, I just, you know, because it's multifaceted and just chaotic, you know. I would do the first. The first crusade is just insane. Um, pretty much every step of the way, it's insane. Um, but, um, other than that, uh, that one scene where, um, Bloom's character shipwrecks and he finds one horse, not two, not no horses, not four horses or two or three, exactly one. And I'm like, no, I, that, that stuff makes me so mad. That's like, you know, what do you take me for a six year old, you know? Just little things like that that'd be just re really easy to just change and not feel like you know you're treated like a fool. You know, you guys need to do a better job of of making things believable. Okay. Is that everything? Other than this chimneys. We're not messing with the chimneys. We're not, we're not fooling with the chimneys. We'll put chimneys on them if, if we like this. Then we can figure out how the hell to attach them. That kind of thing. You've never seen Kingdom of Heaven or whatever it's called with Legolas. The Noah's Ark movie. No, I would never... I would never want to. See. I isn't that have uh, Russell Crowe in it? I've only liked Russell Crowe in Gladiator. I don't care for him in anything else. He was cast really well in Gladiator. I think everybody's like, oh no no, Joaquin was cast really well. Yeah, lots of people could play him. Okay, lots of people could do you know crazy you know. That kind of thing, but uh, I 
I thought Gladiator was a good... Yeah, it's his, historically inaccurate, but, you know... I liked it. Yeah, I don't know... I, I don't know what... I, I can't think of any reason to watch a Noah's Ark movie. Absolutely not. <laughs> Zero interest in that. Isn't Jennifer Connelly in that too? Why am I thinking Russell Crowe and Jennifer Connelly in that? I haven't even seen it. They got a Noah's Ark... Um, theme park or something like that in Kentucky or something like that. <laughs> no thanks. I have not seen The Miserables. I have not seen The Miserables. <coughs> Didn't he catch all kinds of grief for singing in there and he couldn't sing? Troy pissed me off as a kid. I think I gave up on historical dramas after that. Yeah. I don't think Brad Pitt's good in much. Certainly not that. should do a good movie on the Odyssey, but they just fuck it up, you know? I think they've done it. Didn't they do one? Didn't they do one one time? I tried watching with Armand Asante or something like that. It's probably horrible. But, you know, I grew up on those Sinbad movies and all that stuff, and, you know, I guess they were acceptable back then, but. I'm a, I'm a fan of Greek mythology. I thought the remake of um, of um, Clash of Titans wasn't half bad. The first one, the first remake. I mean, there's a monster. You know, there's a monster. He's bigger than the. He's gonna. He's bigger than the freaking town he's attacking. That's a monster. That's something you need to be scared of. Not ooh a raptor ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Argonauts my favorite as a kid you know I've never seen it and I haven't avoided it it's not like oh there's that movie on we're not going to see it you know I, it just wasn't playing when it was on. I've never seen that one. I should watch it. I like all those animatronic uh, claymation type creatures. You know, toys brought to life as I like to call them. Yeah, I know I do. I know I do. Especially because I like that kind of stuff, you know. I just thought my brother was coming into town. We got to we got to revive the watching the Bond movies in order. We kind of stopped halfway. Honestly, a lot of them were putting me to sleep. <laughs> it doesn't help to watch them late at night either. You know. But man, we still got like 15 or so to go. So 15, something like that. About, about halfway done. 
to hide your teeth seen, man, there's nothing better. Yeah. I, li I love Greek mythology stuff. Yeah, I like those old special effects because they're, you know, they're, they're things. They're inanimate things that they get them to move. So somewhere, somebody's got a, you know, a creature that came to life on a, on a, you know, a model that came to life on a big screen. That's pretty freaking cool. I mean, I can appreciate that kind of stuff. You didn't much, you didn't care for the Clash of Titans remake. You liked the old one. Oh, the old one's terrible. Oh, the, the acting in the old one is terrible. Man, the Kraken in the new one. That's, that's like the best monster, period. I don't know that there's a bet. I mean, he's. He's bigger than freaking Godzilla, you know. I'm telling you, he's like attacking. He's attacking the town. He's bigger than the freaking town he's attacking. It's like you know, monster this big, town this big. You know, like you know, he just has you know beans the night before in the town. It's over for the town, you know. <laughs> Master and commander, I didn't care for it. I but you know, I'm not a fan of the period. You know. Um, and I wasn't confusing, it just, I didn't hate it, it just, and a lot of people liked that movie, just didn't do anything for me. Is this the last little bastard to glue? This glue is so forgiving, as it should be. Oh, no, no, it's not. I have to glue all these fences together. My work is never done. You know what movie I saw talking about Greek mythology? And I watched this because I tend to not watch scary shit. I don't, I don't like it. I'll watch all the thrillers in the world, but I don't like watching supernatural shit. Especially if it has like really scary masks. I have, I have mask problems. Um, and I don't remember what it was called. I'm sure it had a really generic name like... Minotaur, but it was the, a redo of the whole Minotaur thing, and that that effort was scary as shit. Um, that's that's like my favorite. That's one of my favorite monsters of all time. Like if you're talking about D and D monsters, the Minotaur. Remember the Minotaur? It's in um, Keep on the Borderlands in in that that cave. Yeah, that's one of my favorite creatures of Minotaurs. So they, they, they redid the thesis movie. I don't know. It's probably 10 years old now or whatever. And I remember watching it. I was like, I'm just sitting at the edge of my seat. and I've played a couple of games where it involved the Minotaur and involved a labyrinth. And I'm like sitting at my edge of my seat while I'm playing it. Including, uh, what is it, the Assassin's Creed one. That was stressful. I was waiting to see what the hell that thing looked like. 
And then he got his ass beat. And then, you know, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> but the anticipation of fighting that huge bastard was um, was pretty stressful. It's always been one of my favorite creatures. You might not like Jason and the Argonauts if I didn't like the Clash of Titans acting. Well, you know, some things that are from the 60s and 50s are actually better acted than things from the 70s. The 70s is kind of a weird period. You know, I don't know whether it was everybody was doing is doing all the drugs and they're just like, ah, just just put it down. We'll make it work or something. But there's some stuff from the 70s. It's just God awful. I mean, luckily, I don't remember the 70s very well. I was in the single digits age wise in the 70s. So. Fence Friday rolls on. Friday night fencing. There you go. Friday night's all right for fencing. Yeah. On guard, it's Friday night fencing. Yeah, they're going to make a... I saw they're making a Three Musketeers movie, and it's going to be in French. I'm like... It took them this long to do it. I'm sure they've they've done other versions of it, but the last version of Three Musketeers and Three Musketeers, Four Musketeers, it's all the same thing. Um, that I saw that they come out with was in Russian. I'm like, that's doesn't work. I mean, I didn't see it. I mean, um, I want to see. I want to find the original one. You know, the original original one. Well, not the original original one. The one from is it 1946? The one that has Vincent Price as Richelieu. I want my daughter to see that. Cause that's, you know, that's the one that all the sword fighting stuff ideas came from that people got from all the other movies. This is a great, fun, old movie. The color, of course. I do a Three Musketeers movie not be in color. That would be stupid. Um, but it's hard to find. I don't, I may, I may be able to find it somewhere, but man, I don't want to purchase it. It's an old movie. It should be available for people to see free. You know, we made enough money on it. Mr. Joe, welcome. Just fencing away here. My daughter's never seen the original Ben Hur. It's it used they used to play it all the time when I was a kid. And I thought it was a, I thought it was a great movie, you know. The three amigos, not quite the same thing. <laughs> Not quite the same thing. Martin Short. I've always found Martin Short creepy in every single thing I've seen him in, except that series that just came out on... I don't even know what the hell it came out on. The one that has... He's in it with uh, Steve Martin and um, the Sol is it Selena Gomez or whatever? Murders in the Building. We watched a couple episodes and the girls just couldn't catch on. I thought it was pretty good. He was like an old washed up movie director, producer, or something like that. I thought he nailed that, that role really well and, and didn't seem creepy or... Just always reminded me of somebody who shouldn't be around children. Whatever you want to call that, but... That's one of those things we tried watching as a family, and I thought it was okay. Um, you know, it wasn't anything great, but they didn't want to finish watching it or whatever. So, yeah, I always thought Martin Short a little keep that guy away from children. Same thing with Jeff Goldblum. Although, honestly, I've kind of taken a liking to him. He's he's quirky and his old is he's kind of his own. He's kind of his own person, you know, he's kind of unique and it's the same way that uh, Christopher Walken is. Christopher Walken's kind of Christopher Walken. He's, you know, strange and odd and eccentric and that's kind of what makes him 
different from everybody else. Well, you know, it's Holly weird people. They're all weird. I'm just saying, you know, they're the persona that they give off is... I just rattle off a bunch of actors and I actually remember who they were because I'm notorious for forgetting people's names. I don't think about them all the time. Uh, honestly, Mel Gibson's historical movies are not very good. Well, let's see. What are they? Um, let's name them. Um, the Patriot. I hated The Patriot. I hated it. I hated it. I was rooting for the Brits the whole time. You know, when you make things all completely one-sided, I'm like, I'm... I'm I will take my revenge on you and I'm going to root for the other side. I would never watch it again. I've watched it one time and it was torturous. Uh, I thought I disliked Braveheart, but I thought Braveheart was a lot better than The Patriot. Um, what else? Those two. What else does he have? Uh, is The Passion of the Christ one of them? Didn't see it. Started to and just... I had better things to do that day, I guess. Um, I liked Apocalypto. I saw Apocalypto again within the last year, and I still thought it was pretty solid. I liked Apocalypto, but that may be the only one that I that that I like of his movies. I I can't think of any others. I'm sure he's got five or six different ones that I can't think of. I like We Were Soldiers. Um, Mel Gibson is creepy. Yeah, most actors are creepy. I don't know. I don't think I've seen an interview with him. I bet he interviews better than Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford is like the most awkward person in an interview. You know, maybe because he's just so different than his characters are. You know, Indiana Jones and Han Solo are, are two characters that have a shitload, a shitload of charisma. And he has none. I mean, and you just assume that, you just assume that he would be, have some of, of the character with him, but it's not. It's, he's just, he's like, he can't stand being in his, his own skin. It's really awkward. But, you know, I don't want to meet anybody famous. They're all weird and they've got, you know, they got addictions that I don't have, you know. Mel Gibson wasn't an apocalypto, which made it good for me. Yeah, he wouldn't have fit in really well with that. You liked We Were Soldiers. I saw it in the movie theater. That's a Vietnam movie, so. I don't, I don't love Vietnam movies. They just don't really do anything for me. I, I think I was ambivalent when I saw it. Um. I've never seen Gallipoli. Is that technically one of his movies? I've actually never seen the Mad Max movies, any of them. I started watching the first one, and it was like really dated. Like it, it was like I can't do this anymore. It just, it's just way too dated for me. And you know, the thing is, is now we have access to to so many things to watch. When something isn't like really good, you're like, I'm not wasting my time with this. I'll watch something else. You know. Back when we were kids, you know, we suffered through whatever the hell we had to because that was the only thing on. You know, if you wanted to watch, if you wanted to watch TV on Sunday mornings, which we all did, um, you're gonna watch Lost in Space. I mean, it's not because we loved Lost in Space that like, that's what they were freaking playing, you know. So now people can watch anything they want all the time. No reason to suffer through something that you know potentially sucks. All of them. All right, let me put my glasses so I can find myself. Oh, big old smudge. Joy, you Noel. I hadn't even heard of it. Is that like French Merry Christmas? Because that sure is what it sounds like. Joyous Noel. That's like Merry Christmas in French. I 
think. That's what I'm going to go with. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see what, what kind of fencing situations we got here. A fence, a fence, another fence, and of course we can, you know, we can angle these in the where they need to be. I don't know how the hell these get attached. They don't have any supports or anything. I guess if you glue them on some kind of a base, maybe we'll have to make bases for these. We'll worry about that if we decide to go in this direction. All these fences as well. Is that all the fences? All right, certainly I've got a little box these jokers can go in for the time being to get them off of here. Put all these, and then we've got all the little doors and shit. Yeah. All right, that's all those. Then we have a shed here. How'd the roof hold on there? Okay, it's held off enough. Yeah, we got another shed part. Okay. This is the one that I did not glue the roof on purpose because where did it go? Oh, here it is. Because it would be like trying to glue this edge onto this. So, but that's, this is an addition to it as well. All right, now let's put all the buildings together. This is the one that has the odd size floor. For some reason, the floor doesn't fit inside this one. It's significantly larger and it was like the first one that I did. So we're gonna leave it as is and the roof that that one goes on is, I believe, this one. So we'll put it in over there. See, that's why you don't put them on bases. I can just, you know, kind of gently stack these things. See, this floor fits inside. I said we can make these more permanent if we decide to keep going in this direction. Right now, I don't want to throw a bunch of labor at something that I may not be happy with when I put them on the, on the game table. But I'll be honest with you, I don't think that I need more buildings of this for, you know, I mean, it'd be nice to have some kind of a church, you know, just because it, it has some kind of a, some height to it, but now where's the floor to that one? It must be this. And these are just all kind of haphazardly thrown in here. I'm just, I'm putting them here to move them because we got to work on some tanks. So this is all the buildings and stuff. And I want to go ahead, since we have them all together, take all of the chimneys that I have, which is one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go ahead and put those in there as well. So we have all the stuff for the paper buildings Looking good so far. We'll have to see what they look like in natural light on the, the playing surface. Take some photos tomorrow and see what they look like. And, you know, and they're done. I had them. It's not like I purchased them yesterday. Okay. You guys are, you guys are gone. Well, that only took 17 fucking years to do it. <laughs> World War I soldiers had unofficial peace. Boy, you just pulled that out of nowhere. Are you on AM frequency or something? Are you talking about that Christmas peace? Dumbest war I can think of. War that should have never even happened. Well, lots of war shouldn't have happened. That one in particular should not have happened. Okay. Um, all right, let's get these exacto blades the hell out of here. 
and let's bring on the tanks. All right, we've got this T26 that's almost ready to be weathered, but we've got the basing for them and the two BT7s. Now the long ones are the BT7 ones, the short ones are the T26s. Yeah, so I need to go ahead and, and base these in brown because that, that takes a little bit of time to dry. So let's get old chocolate brown out here. And um, you don't need to use the wet palette for that. I'm going to take a little pee break and I will be right back. And we will roll into painting. Be right back, folks. Okay, Mel Gibson. Were you talking about Mel Gibson? Is a Mel Gibson movie technically a movie that he's in or one that he directs? <laughs> Please be careful opening. Okay. I don't know that I've seen all the Lethal Weapon movies. Is a wet palette to thin paints. You can use it for a lot of things. What it's really... I'm going to paint these quick and you'll see it in action. That's, I'm going to go back to it. It really keeps you... Um, what I use it for the most is I can put some paint down there, mix it, and um, it's workable for a long period of time. So I don't have to like mix it every... like. 30 seconds because it dries out on me. That's what I use it for. So it saves me time because I don't have to go back and remix it. But some people use it in different ways. Some people probably, oh, let's let's remember how we do this. Well, let's, let's even do it one step before that. Let's put it on a little device here. And I put the paint right on there because this is, we put a lot of paint on here. And this is just a shim that I've cut to size with the Vallejo, um, God, which, what's it called? Which I gotta get more of it anyways. Ground texture, rough gray pumice. Oh man, I've let the dry. I've let the dry way too long. Um, let's, let's use a brush we don't, Give a hoot about. Probably this this old thing. 
because we're going to be really rough with it. So we can get in on all those little areas. But um, some people use it because uh, they have trouble mixing colors. You know, they get the right mix and they're not able to mix it again. If you got any kind of practice mixing colors, you know, I, I can remix anything. You know, it, and it's either turn out just as close or you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. It just saves me time. You having to stop and having to do that thing. Oh, we're going to get paint on ourselves. Oh, I don't like that. It just takes time to go out and wash myself off. You know, wash yourself off? What are you doing with the paints exactly? Don't ask. You can use anything as a wet palette. Um, yeah, well, technically, the idea is that you've got something that has that's holding moisture underneath the paper, and um, you know this isn't a wet palette. This is just a palette, and you know it's close enough that the paint is getting some moisture from it and stays workable for a period of time. Um, to behave more like you know an enamel paint that can stay wet for a longer period of time, so you, you can't really use an you can't use a wet palette with say something like oil or or um, enamels because they just they're naturally that way anyways. But I did most of my painting without using one. I didn't know about it. Again, it's one of those things about the internet that you find out from word of mouth so that we're not all trying to invent the wheel at the same time, you know? And it's not necessary. I don't know that I paint any better with one, but it, it saves me some time. And, you know, anything that saves me time in, in areas that are unimportant, like priming, uh, anything like that, base coating, I'm a fan of. I don't necessarily need to cut corners when it comes to, you know, painting actual figures because I think that I personally don't want to compromise what they look like based on speed. But if it's something that's unimportant, like, you know, base coating something and I just want to do it quicker so that I can spend some time on the stuff that's really important to me. I welcome those opportunities to do so. But I used to, when I first started painting, uh, I would use um, the top of like Pringles cans, you know, so it's basically the same material as this. To kind of you know mix the colors on there, but you know they're in a in a couple minutes they're dry, so you gotta you have a limited amount of time to work on them, and it just it's just kind of a pain. Then I read about a wet palette. I made my own with a with a sponge, and I used that for for several years until I just decided to buy a commercial one. And the only difference the commercial one makes is that the sponge it comes with is um, a lot less porous. Uh, well, I shouldn't say it's a lot less porous. The, the pores are a lot smaller. If you get like a sponge that you use for like dishwashing, it has pretty big pores in it, almost like Swiss cheese, so to speak. And anytime that there's a pore, that's an area that the sponge is not touching the paper. And so that potentially is an area that is not getting as much, much moisture as it could. And therefore... Um, isn't being as efficient but you know you could make your own and it, and, and it would work you know I'm just like well I, these commercial these commercially available ones you don't have to mine them as much as if you make your own like the the, the corners won't curl up on them as much and it's just just a little easier to do and if it's if you're gonna buy something like that the, if you see yourself do using it the sooner you buy it and you're painting uh, uh, not travels or your painting experience the sooner you buy it the the more use you'll get out of it you know it's one of those things that you don't want to paint you don't want to be painting for 25 years and say i'll go ahead and try the wet palette now 
because you could have been using it for 25 years before kind of thing. So, you know, that's the only thing I, you know, recommend if you're, if you're, if you're just, if you're doing any kind of mixing or blending or layering, um, get one, you know, you don't have, you know, they're, you can get them as cheap as I think like 20 bucks or something like that. And, um, it's one of those things that you will use every time you paint. So it becomes a lot more affordable, you know, like a light. Don't be afraid of buying a light that, you know, you're going to use forever because every single time you paint, you're going to be using it, you know, now look at, look at this, look at this nonsense. And see, I got to clean this up. So I don't like put this paint on something else. So we're going to clean this up. I'll be right back. And, um, and we'll use the wet palette and I'll show you what I do with it. If you haven't seen one of my other videos where I use it lots of times, I'll be right back. We got some soap from the house that we keep in each bathroom that I really don't like at all. I don't like how it smells one bit. And it's called Meyer's soap, but it works amazing for brushes. It, it, it works really well, but you know, it's not like a, you know, it's not like a, uh, I was gonna say flavor. It's not, it's not a, a smell that I care for. Um, Actually, they do make one. They make a blue one that actually smells okay, but we don't have that one. They were out of it or something, but yeah, it just smells nursing home-ish. Why not use a sponge to paint those bases? Because I can't get all the way into between the grit. And you have to have this cover color. You have to have this color cover everything because you don't want any of the clear poking out. Okay, because the other two colors will we'll end up dry brushing on there. Now, let me find out what the wet palette is, and here it is. And let's get these guys the hell out of here. They can dry. That way they'll be dry in the morning. Thanks to the guy in the stream who suggested it, but the primer is coming out a lot cleaner when brushing in the same direction. That would be Nordic, I think he said it. Um, I used to do... I've gone through a lot of different primers, mainly because they've discontinued them. I used to use Model Master Acryl, and then they nixed all that. And now what I use is Vallejo Surface Primer, mainly because this stuff is really weird, and it's some kind of polyurethane, acrylic polyurethane in it. And um, why is this backwards again? I specifically changed this to not be reversed, and this son of a bitch changed back. Anyhow, um, yeah, if you see me painting with my left hand, it's reversed. I don't paint left-handed. I wish I could, but that would be a challenge. Um, this, stuff, uh, this stuff applies really well. It goes in like all the nooks and crannies, almost like a watered-down enamel. Um, and that's why I like it, you know. Plus, it has zero smell. And it's relatively expensive, but it lasts a very, 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 very long time. So, here we have our T26 tank that we have added some, some details to. And I'm going to continue adding details to it um, a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. 
we've got Russian green and we've got dark sand lighting it, lighting, lighting it up. Um, I use spray primer, so I spray lightly to try to get most of the stuff, and then I brush on the difference. Um, I don't use the spray for everything to try to get in every nook and cranny because you would just you would you would put get too much paint on places you didn't want trying to get paint in everything else. So um, you're not going to be able to do a steady job. Maybe if you had like an airbrush, but uh, I don't I don't airbrush. I don't have time to. Here it is, Russian green, eight ninety four. Now it's called something else. My my big gripe with Vallejo is they changed the the names of the colors and they reformulated a few of them and they're close. I mean, there's you know it's not uber precise or anything. You'll see after what I do with this afterwards. You see it's not you see it's not that critical. And then the one thing I like to add is because I don't use water with this, I use. Flow aid, and I just use this instead of water. Just to, and you're supposed to. If you look at the instructions, mix one part flow aid to twenty parts water. Yeah, well, I'm an experienced painter. I ain't doing that shit. That's too much work. So I'm just gonna do. Um, this should still be moist enough. To you know, like this, I put this black color down probably two weeks ago, and it's still alive, as I like to say. So we're going to come in with some Russian green. And I just use this flow aid to kind of thin it down a little bit so that I'm not painting really thick. And I'm just going to hit the edges. I think this color might not, isn't too, too thin. I'm just going to hit the edges to kind of show some contrast. I'm almost done with this. I could probably get away with not doing this because I've already tinkered with it some. And the next stage is going to really cover over some of this stuff. But I like to pick out the stuff that I want to stand out on this thing. But I don't do any chipping. You know, we're going to do some some thin scratches. Nothing crazy. And then we're just going to dry brush it. Just so you got the surface of this tank that's not the same consistency. And I've already done lots of this stuff on it before. This is just kind of the, the place where I stopped at. All right, so we're going to take this turret off because it's easier to work with. And let's get our dry brushing stuff on here. Now, the base was done with chocolate brown. There's two colors that go on top of it. Those are the two colors that are going to be on this tank. Um, in other words, it's like the dust that's it's on the, the base. It's kind of worked its way up. Okay, and those two colors for this base color happens to be um, U.S. Field Drab. Okay, which is this one. And uh, Iraqi Sand. grab a this should do fine as a dry brush let's get this out of the way we're going to be jumping on the other t26 here shortly so we don't have to move it far and we've already painted the road wheels we've all painted the track in a basic color which i use kind of a dark brown And you know what? Let's take another one of these and cut a little corner off or rip a little corner off so I don't have to look at this damn thing while I'm painting something else. 
It's not dry brushed. Okay, this is the one that has some glue. So let's go ahead and cut us a little corner over here. That's what we're going to dry brush on top of. Yeah, thinning with water. I've pretty much given up trying to thin things with water. Um, I'll either use the airbrush thinner. Airbrush, acrylic airbrush thinner works really well. Um, really, really well, actually. And um, that's usually what I use. Okay, so here's the color that we have. And it's always good to start on the suspension. So if you screw that up, it's somewhere that there should be more dust on it than anywhere. And I'm actually not worried about handling it too much because um, it all works itself out. We'll end up sealing this afterwards. So let's get it back here in the body. And we don't want to go crazy because we still want to show that this is a green tank. And that's just my personal choice. You know, lots of, lots of people do it in different ways. I like to show that it's still a gray tank or a green tank underneath. Likewise, I don't do road wheels in gray. I just do them in black if there's any rubber, because I'm going to do this kind of treatment, which is going to gray them out anyways. Um, okay, and then continuing on this side, we're going to go ahead and do the, the tracks. I'm not worried about the track underneath here. It's not, not going to be seen, but the visible part of the tracks. And of course, the back of the tank is the one is the part that gets really, really dusty. And the tracks on this side, and we're gonna we're gonna do one more color on top of this one. We're gonna do the Iraqi sand on top of this one. So you don't want to like go full hog on this one, and you got to leave yourself some room to do some kind of detailing with with the lighter color. But you know you want to do the the front of the tank, the part that's gonna get dirty here. Between each color, how long do we wait? Well, generally, not no time at all. Uh, the only thing that you uh, you have to wait time-wise, or I feel like you have to wait time-wise, is um, the primer. Uh, the primer takes a little bit longer to dry than other things. But generally, um, I don't have to wait for drying time. And obviously, clear coat. you got to wait for a clear coat once you, once you do that. But we don't really have to do a clear coat here. Um, to put the decals on because I actually painted the markings on by hand. They're very primitive, you know, the, on these early 1941 tanks. They have very primitive decals on the Soviet tanks. So you can buy a decal sheet or you can just kind of look at paint. You can look at stuff and paint them on yourself. Uh, the problem with the decal sheet is I gotta wait for them to come in, and they're like twenty bucks, and I'm like, yeah, I just I'll just hand paint these, you know. It'll be it'll be good enough. You know, I can always change my mind. I don't like how it looks. I can go and we're gonna have some of this dust that comes up here, not crazy, and then there's a pathway to this. There's this place where the where the the compartment for the um, for the drivers in. So, you know, there's going to be some dirt where somebody maybe comes in and out from there. And we've got this turret, so maybe some there. Nothing crazy, but just a little bit, so it has some differentiation in, in color. So it's not all, like, brand new. It's not all, like, super dusty either. And that just depends what you want. And there's always slower, more detailed ways of doing weathering than what I do. I just know that I am not a fan of dust effects. I'm not a fan of taking a light color and putting it on this tank in such a way that the light color stays in the crevices. 
because I'm basically undoing everything that I do. I, 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 my painting style is you leave darker in the recesses. And if you add like dust effects, it does the opposite. It's, it kind of blends everything together. And I, I need them to stand out a little bit because they're wargaming miniatures. They're not necessarily, you know, super realistic. They need to look realistic, but not, you know, we're not entering a IPMS competition for them okay and obviously do not forget the turret the turret is going to have some of this dust that's been kicked up get almost all off not a lot because it's far away from the bottom I mean, obviously there's examples where you could use that has dust everywhere but I, I want the original color to show okay and then the roof And that's good enough for me as far as that color goes. Now, again, you are not going to be able to tell the difference on this until you actually see in the pictures because the, the, the light just washes everything out. It, it doesn't look as, actually doesn't look that bad on the photo but and now we're going to do the same thing but with Iraqi sand which is the next color up current for the practice I own I use Tamiya ultra thin for metals while I need to use a stronger glue yeah I don't know what Tamiya ultra thin is it this extra thin yeah this won't glue metal at all all this is is a solvent that softens the plastic that you weld the other plastic together. So technically, when you, you use something like this, instead of having 60 pieces of plastic, you technically have one. You've welded them all to become one piece of plastic. That's how this works. Now, this stuff is, I think, the best thing in the world because of that little applicator, which is just incredible. But this stuff works as good as the old tester stuff that we used to use. Um, I personally like um, this one the most. This micro weld. It's made by the people that make Microsol and Microset. And it smells like oranges. You know, it's, it's, it says it's non-toxic, but it's also flammable. So I don't know how it can be. It's non-toxic, but yet it's flammable. What is it? Vodka? <laughs> It has no chemical smell at all. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy another bottle of this stuff. I'm going to fill this to the brim, empty out the other one of these bottles, and then pour this stuff in here. So I'll have one of these one of these uh, applicators to use. I think that's what I'm going to do. Because um, what we used to do with this is we would just take a regular paintbrush. And this doesn't hurt the paintbrush at all. But but I don't have a paintbrush that's as reliable as as this tip. It is really really quite amazing. What's the next build? They're all built. They're, they're all built. They're going to be upside down. Uh, wait, hold on. Let's get it the right way. Yeah. They're all built over here waiting. So there's no more builds, so to, say, so to speak. Um, it's just painting. So uh, painting-wise, we've got these, this T26 to do. One other one. A pair of BT7s. Then we'll get into the Czech 38s. Got some Panzer crewmen that are going to be in the tanks as well. We'll get to paint those just for variety. Here's the Iraqi sand, which for some reason seems a little wetter than normal. That's another reason I put it, I do it on this, on this cardboard because it, it helps soak some of the stuff up. I don't know why this is so damn wet. I mean, we didn't do a good job of mixing it. I don't know that that looks any thin, thin, thicker. I 
maybe a little bit. I want to get almost all of it off. And then start on the running gear. Any elephant tanks? I have one, and it's already pre-painted. Um, that I got from Dragon many, many moons ago. The closest thing to an elephant to do that I have is a um, a Tiger One. We're just focusing on the 19... Oh, let's get the other side. We're just focusing on the 1941 stuff at this point. That doesn't mean I don't have lots of other stuff to do. Just, we'll get to them. We'll get to them. And we should be able to do all the stuff that looks reasonably well without using an airbrush. Again, this is going to get kicked up up here. The tracks on that side. We'll do the top in a little bit. What's your favorite World War II tank, there, Justin? What about Stugs? Yeah, yeah. Well, I did a Stug. I did a Stug four. I got a Stug three to do. Oh no, I did a, I did a Stug three uh, in gray, uh, and I did a Stug four in um, in uh, Dunkelgelb, and I've got a Stug three G to do, which will be in Dunkelgelb. Um, I got a martyr that's a martyr three that I painted a while ago that I'm going to add some of the details, the extra details that came with the with the check 38 pack, like some seats and stuff, and kind of make that model a little bit better. Plus it had the crewman for it. All right, now we're gonna go, we're gonna go light with this because we don't wanna undo everything that we just did, but we're gonna hit the corners mainly this just keeps from looking like a blob. So you want to come in here and hit these corners. You saw a picture how my Panzer twos came out. They just came out glorious with all of the edges. They came out how I wanted them to look at. Like, you know, so all the things that stood out that you wanted to stand out. So if you look at this at a distance, you don't want this to look like a big blob. Just some different wear patterns on stuff. Nothing crazy, just kind of figure it out as you go along. Not pressing too hard on this, just kind of letting the brush the brush kind of doing its own thing, run, 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 run that across the edge. Stuff that's going to catch your eye when you see it at a distance. So these people always talk about doing modulation and stuff like that. And I'm basically doing the same thing without using an airbrush. And you know, I'm not opposed to the airbrush from the standpoint of a cost. I just don't wanna go in the garage where it's, well, it's not hot today, but it's hot almost every other day. And then do clean up and it's loud and you know, this is where I need to be painting. And you can't do that. I, I can't do that here. I'm just gonna go over the edges just lightly on this hatch. bit of the front there and 
then just do the same thing with, not everywhere, not over the entire vehicle, but just certain certain places where this stuff would have kicked up. put this on here and we're going to stand away at a distance and see if I'm happy with it because like I'm, I'm like right on top of it Let's see what we got I, I'm pretty happy with how that looks and I want to compare that to say let's get one of those pans or twos that we were just talking about See if they look equivalent. Now you guys can't really see because you don't have a. I think it look. I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. It almost looks like it's camouflaged, but that's just because you have wear on different parts of it. And that's kind of what I go with. And it's going to be on a base that looks similar to this, you know, with some grass, you know. Honestly, I'm quite a big fan of the British Crusaders. I am too. I like them a lot. They are cool looking, for sure. Love Stooks, Broom Bars, Sturm Tiger, Half Tracks. Uh, I, got a lot of half, I got a lot of half tracks to do. I just hadn't gotten around to doing them. But I got them. They're waiting in the wings. So here's our T26. And we, we got to spray her with clear coat very lightly. One thing I learned, if you use too much of it, it'll actually like react with other stuff and it'll pull the paint up. So just enough to, you know, you're not going to, you know, ruin it by, by handling it. And just to compare a T34 that is already done in the same way and also not on a base and also not sealed. They look pretty equivalent. Equivalent as far as, you know, highlights and stuff like that on them. Yeah. Okay, so this T26 is done. Let's put this guy away. Let's work on the other one. And the marking on it is kind of weird. It's, it's one that I found that... Basically, it's like a triangle. Let's see if I, I got a pencil here. I can draw it out for you. It's kind of strange. But they all have to have some kind of distinguishing marking between them. So when their turn to act comes up, you'll know which tank you're talking about. It is a triangle. And inside the triangle, there's a divider. And there's a, basically a one and there's like an N symbol underneath it and that's what it is obviously it's in white so paint jobs making me jealous it's easy man it's just a trick it's just a trick and really it's experience so that you don't take it too far you go okay stop don't keep going and you, next thing you know you end up turning this into a tank that looks like it just came out of north africa which is you know if i did north africa africa core that's what i would do i'd paint them gray and then I would just dry brush the shit out of them so that you still have some of the gray showing. Um, and honestly, I like the Crusaders. I'm not excited about doing Africa Core. For, I don't know what it is. It Just something about, I don't like the German tanks in yellow. They just don't look, they don't have as much contrast as I would like. So, let's see if, uh, let's see if we can get you a better view of this. And the lighting isn't exactly right, meaning it's it's gonna look like it has more white in it than it does, because this light is super super powerful. But let's see if we can. 
There's no stain. I'm, I'm not doing oil things or, or anything like that. This is good enough. You know, I don't do chipping. You know, my reasoning is if I do chipping, then I've got to put like dirt stains on like the soldier's legs and stuff like that. And I don't have a good Soviet guy to do. And you'll just have to forgive this guy's base, the basing that's done, you know, like from 1995 because it is from 1995. But, you know, I need to redo the, ba the bases on these guys. But this is plenty good. Plenty, plenty good for a little tank that cost, I don't know, by the time you're done with it, probably seven bucks or something like that for each one. It's pretty inexpensive. Should do a video on everything on the table we finished. I've done those videos and they hardly get any watching. Like I've done, if you if you looked at my playlist, I got some playlists. I've done some from fifteen millimeter armies. Those videos take like an entire day to do, and they have hardly any views. So I guess people aren't really interested in seeing them. Um, you know, maybe when I get some more stuff, sure. You know, it's sweet. Leave it the way it is. Yep. Yeah. You, Less is, not, not less is more, but you can take things too far. You know, and you can still see some of these scratches and stuff that are in here that I put before. I didn't cover them all up. I just did kind of light dry brushing, you know. And that's one thing, that only comes with experience. And I've, I've done a lot of things in the past that I haven't been happy with. But, you know, um, it, you know, what's the worst thing that happened? You have to repaint it, you know. Okay, next T26. So where does it, how does it start looking? Well, uh, where is she? So what I do is this was painted all black or primered all black originally. Man, it's really dark looking. And then it has that, the same Russian green on it, uh, dry brushed on it everywhere so I still have there's some spaces that there has some of the black still left in the recesses so it just keeps me from having to do a pin wash you know I just left some of the black in there and then I came in with Agrax Earthshade which is a brown wash and wash that now that I do have to wait quite a bit of time maybe three maybe an hour or two three hours depending on how thick I put it on there and this is what I get you know, um, look, you can even see that it was black and I kind of dry brushed it here. So you get that color and then you put this brown. That just adds a little bit of modulation to it. And then this is what we're going to start off. So what we're going to start off is now we're going to dry brush again the same green on these sections. So that's where we're going to start from. And we're going to try to get to, you know, something similar to this. Okay, well, we already have some green there. Let's get a dry brushing paper. I mean, I could use this one as well, but what I've, what I've noticed is if I do that, then I, it ends up being something that I could end up putting something on, and then you know, I don't want to get paint on stuff that doesn't need to be on. So, all right, let's get the Tamiya paint. And move this out of the way. Okay. Uh, what do we use as a dry brushing brush? One of these that has like a green tint to it already. I think it's, I think it's in here somewhere. Let's let's look through here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, something like this. Something like that. I do make my own bases for miniatures. Yes. Yes, I like the rounded corners. And I just use shims. I, they're just plastic shims from from work. I think they're a sixteenth of an inch thick. Do I wash my miniatures before priming? Hell no. I've never done it. I don't plan on doing it. That's. I don't cut. There's always some corners that I can cut, and that's the one I choose to cut. Um, 
Why don't I do it? Because I never have. And um, then I've got to dry it thoroughly. And ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> no. I'm sure that whoever does um, does wash the miniatures, they cut some corner I don't cut. So, you know, we're just going to go over most of the tank, almost all the tank with this, but we want to do it kind of dry. I don't use paint that's really thick, so I'm not covering up over any detail. Because this doesn't have a ton of detail on it. It's not very um, deep. And we do want to leave some of that brown there. Otherwise, why'd you do the wash if you're going to cover it all over? Right? You know, there's, there's things I, I dislike doing, and probably the, the thing I dislike doing the most is, is, is taking flash off of whatever I'm painting. That's probably the thing I dislike the most. Then priming. That's just stupid shit that anybody could do, you know. Um, I mean, obviously, not everyone can, can prime correctly because some people probably do it too thick. But I'm just saying it just takes no creativity. It takes no creativity to, 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 to prime miniature. So I'm not very excited in doing it. I want to do things that I can put my own spin or my own take on, on it. Priming, anybody could be priming it in the, in the correct color, so forth. Let's see. I'm going to leave specifically the darker color down in these recesses. And this doesn't really show any brush strokes. Okay, now we do the turret. Do I like World War II movies? Most of the time, no, because they're not done right. <laughs> Good ones? Sure. If you have a... Um, if you have Netflix, there's one out there right now. I think it's still on there called The Forgotten Battle. It was recommended by Nordic. It's a great movie. And there's a series also that's very good called, you know, other than, you know, obviously Band of Brothers and stuff like that, which is, you know, very good. Um, a series called Generation War, which is about some German kids end up getting drafted, what have you, join the service. Starts like around Barbarossa. So that's actually a really good series. It's 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 a series of three movies. it's like three movies that are like an you know an hour and a half, movie length long each. And that one's particularly good. I think. Okay, so that's that's as far as we're going to take it with with this color. Now we're going to come in and we're going to take this dark sand. And I actually got the dark sand idea from someone else in a video. My natural reaction would have been, had I not seen that video, put white in it to lighten it up. But this actually softens it quite a bit. So I'm going to take that and we're going to take some of this Russian green that we did before. Let's. Thin it a little bit so it mixes okay. Not that I really want it thin. We don't want to go that big of a step. And then we're going to go over it again with this lighter color. Downfall. Um, downfall is actually very good. Um, the only problem with downfall is it represents a very small, very last minute kind of period of time. Which is, you know, kind of, you know, not necessarily indicative of everything that happened in World War II, but um, it's very good. It's certainly worth watching. It's certainly worth watching.
I haven't seen Das Boot in a long time. I've seen it twice. The first time, and then I rewatched it a second time. It's okay. It's not bad. It's certainly worth watching. Certainly worth watching. You know, I grew up watching Guns and Navarone. I can't tell you how many times I watched that movie as a kid. What was on all the time, you know? When you're a kid, you got to watch whatever the hell they were playing. They were playing that one a lot. So I grew up watching that movie. Didn't they make a crappy series off DOS boot? Yeah, I think now that you mention it, they did. I never saw it. I heard that, I heard that's what I heard about it, that it was crappy. What's up, Nordic? Working on the second T26. Yeah, now that you mention it, I, I think it was crappy. Uh, but, you know, just from what other people said, I, I didn't see it. Ever use Mr. Surfacer 500? I have not. What's it supposed to do? Add texture? You know, they have all kinds of products that, in my opinion, you could take too long. You could always make this process that I'm doing look better and take infernally longer. At some point, you got to say, okay, this is good enough for a war game. You know? I like to pride myself and think that my stuff looks better than most people use in their war games by a long shot, which isn't saying a whole lot. See, look at this. I just did this dry brush, and I just added some streaks on there. Eh, it's probably not noticeable with the camera, but... You know, it just adds some variety. Some interest. And I don't go all the way to the end. I leave the, the end of the barrel kind of in a natural smoky looking. And it works pretty well. And it just saves me from having to do that as well. Okay, are we pretty much good to move on from here? I think so. I think so. So now, now the next step is we're going to really get in there and polish up some of these details using what I like to call forced highlights. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the same little mix here, but we're not going to operate off this dry brush. We're going to operate off of this. And we're going to use a really thin brush, like this one I was using earlier. magic juice flow aid just to kind of keep things moist the M word moist didn't know there was a cabal of people that didn't like that word like adds texture no I don't think the store here locally has it Some of these models aren't worthy of all extra attention. <laughs> you could definitely go bananas with them. So I'm just gonna come in here. First thing is I like hitting all these edges, making them pop. That's what I ended up doing with the Panzer, the, the, some of the Panzers. The Panzers have, 
you know, one of the reasons the Germans lost the war is they kept tinkering with their tank designs and they had, you know, all these like different angles and stuff in the turret. And a couple of their turrets start off at one angle and just before you get to the cupola, it goes to another one. Well, there's a, there's a, a difference in, in angles there that isn't really apparent on a model unless you accentuate it. And I try to do stuff like that with, you know, doing something like this. So it just catches your eye and just adds, it adds interest. It gives you something to look at instead of just one big green blob or a gray blob or what have you. <coughs> and this is just kind of relaxing. I'm coming over here and picking these things out. The edge of this box. It's the same thing I did with the other one. But I got the idea of mixing this dark sand with the base color instead of using white, which is what I would have done. I would have done everything else the same. I just wouldn't have done this dark sand. And, um, you know, just because it's my old habit of lightening things with, with white. But it look make it look a lot chalkier, you know. The way I did it. So, and at some point, we're going to try to do a snow vehicle, but... Not anytime soon. Yeah, now you can say it's TGIF because now it's really the weekend. You know, for those of us that have a normal Monday through Friday schedule. There's lots of people that don't. So we're just going to pick some of these things of interest here. Handles. This edge as well. Sometimes you got to mix more in here, so. I prefer painting vehicles or infantry. Well, I hadn't painted vehicles in 20 years. So that's why I'm doing vehicles. Um, I actually prefer painting infantry. And when I go to paint infantry, we're going to be doing Soviets. I've got lots of Germans. I don't have as many Soviets. I have a lot of Germans because I, I built them for a scenario that has Americans in them as well. So... Um, we're going to do like some anti-tank rifles and stuff like that for the, for the, for the Soviets. What I mean is, you know, I mean, you're, you know, you're using in, in this particular game, you're using maybe 30 figures on a side at the most. That's, that's a lot of folks for these. So all these vehicles you see here, they're not all going to be in play at the same time. This is just for variety. You know, you might have two T26s on there and then, you know, like a couple squads, you know, it's that kind of. It's that kind of ratio, not, you know, four tanks and ten guys, ten infantrymen. No, it's, it's, it's mainly an infantry game, just with tanks for support. Again, we're going to add 
had some some happenings on here. perfect world I will get this tank done also tonight so that's going to be my goal is to to get this one completed to the level this one is And some vehicles just going to take longer to do than others. I've got a, a, a Tiger 1 with Zimmerit. That's going to take a while to do. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more substance to this. It doesn't need to be that light, though. There we go. That's too light. There we go. And we're going to pick up the edges of this hatch. That will also help make the black in between the hatches pop, stand out. Six mil Napoleonics, yeah. You may not be old enough to remember, but oh, I don't remember what it was called, but there was this these counters you could buy. This for a Napoleonic game that you could play with just counters. And the counters, of course, were the shape of the regiments and stuff like that. I forget what it was. I don't think what it was called, but it was almost like it came in like a baggie. You could get like, you know, French troops that were at Eilau or something like that, you know, and it would have all the units would, it would tell you what unit it was and maybe who the commander is. And they were, you know, had no figures on them. It just kind of had the outline of, you know, how they were, how they were. And they had a tricky name for them. I don't remember what they were. This is, this is like, you know, late eighties kind of thing when these things were around. I specifically remember they had them for Napoleonics. They might have had them for like American Civil War as well. Other periods too, but Napoleonics stood out to me. I wish they had that Battle of the Atlantic game redone to have the rate of fire changed. 
because it'd be fun doing something like Battle of North Cape or something like that with that on the computer. I'm sure the, you know, I mean, I, I think it's a game I have on my phone, and they make it for the PC as well, and it's got better graphics. That not that it really needs any better graphics. It's got excellent graphics. But the rate of fire is the same. You know, you, every every ship just takes turns firing. And you get the fire once. It doesn't matter whether it's a 4 or 5 inch gun. Or it's an 11 inch gun. Or 15. The fire is, you know, once per turn. One, you know, one shell for each barrel. So it kind of makes the heavy ships even more powerful than the light ship. Because you can't put out as many shells with the small ones. Even at short range. You know, you're only going to fire once. So... Really, the only downfall that it has to surface surface combat with between you know capital ships. House G early, so it doesn't have the the chin the chin armor on the turret. I would imagine. Now, we need to figure out what the markings are for this thing. And I think I narrowed it down to what it was. It's also another one with a stripe on it. But so just bear with me for a second. And then we'll put it on the screen when I pull it up. I believe I should be on my Pinterest. It may not be on here. Whew. Man. Let's see. Where's that now? Let's go here. All pins. I may not have pinned it on here. It might actually be a decal set that's off of eBay. for the T26s and BTs. That's exactly right. Okay, so let's close this then. And we're gonna add this and let's go to eBay. Yep. And I should be able to... Is it on my watch list? Should be able to do a search for one seventy second T twenty six decals. No, not that one. Not that one. Not that one. Maybe it was not 172nd. Oh, well, I didn't get the slash in there. Put a period. Finish decals. Finish decals. Now. Hey, yeah, how do you think saved? I don't know why it's not turning up here. 
but it's made by a company called Colibri. All right, so let's take the 172nd law and do Colibri. Here we go. It was a 135th scale. That's what it was. All right. And we're specifically looking for this early turret model. So this has like a two over a 15. Well, regardless. Well, that has a nice little square on it. One over the four. Is that just over the back of the turret? Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's get some white out here. The white I doubt is still alive that we have. You know, you can buy these decals and make them a 172nd scale, but they're so rudimentary and basic that forget costs it's gonna take it takes a couple months to get them because they come from like Serbia or something like that I'm like I don't have time for that okay so this whole thing is all okay we're gonna make a box and the box is gonna fit right in here we should be able to use this 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 particular this particular brush. All right, so we're gonna do a square. It's gonna go like this. It's gonna go like that. We're gonna, we can clean this thing up later. Okay, that's pretty square. And then this has a slash that goes from one corner to the next. Okay. And then we're going to put a one and a four there. So we're going to put a one up here. And then we're doing a stylized four. <coughs> Does it go all the way through? No. Something like that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other end and then we'll clean it up. So, now I'm personally a fan of liners. liner style brushes that you have a lot better control than like with rounds ok 
Okay, that's pretty square. All right, and the slash goes from this corner to the other one. Damn it, I wasn't expecting this thing to move. Okay, and four there and one four there <coughs> now let's minimize this <coughs> no yawning yeah shit happens <laughs> So let's clean up this with the flat green here. Oh, I've got to go a little darker than that. Not much cleanup. Yeah, clean up there. That's let's see, can we? That's pretty clean and should do just fine for considering how messy these communists are. Okay. So now we'll come in with this lighter thing here. Make these little rivets and stuff stand out.
Okay, I'm going to call it a night because I'm. It's almost ten o'clock, and I got to be up early for more of this. But we got some numbering on there. We got some details around the hatches, and you can tell it's. There's still a little bit more to do on here, and then you'll be able to do that. So, okay, folks. Uh, until next time, thanks for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Have a good day.